good morning. Welcome to the FC Clubhouse Online. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving this past week. Um, and so as you guys can tell, uh, we're ready for Christmas and we're all decorated here. Um, and so uh, I'm ready. We're starting a brand new series this week called Incredible Christmas. Um, and so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and so this Sunday is actually the start of Advent. Um, and so we're going to kind of just mention uh, each theme uh, as we spend our time together. Um, but this week we're talking about hope. Um, and so I'm excited for that. Uh, and so we're going to get ready for our question of the week. And this week I want to know what is one of your favorite superheroes? Uh, and so I'd love for you to put that in the comments. Um, but what is one of your favorite superheroes? So we're gonna get ready for worship. And so I wanna encourage you guys to stand up um, and sing and dance with me as we really just take this time to really focus on God uh, and worship him because he's so good to us and he's worthy of all of our praise. Um, so I'd love for you to join me in that.
So in this series, Incredible Christmas, we're going to focus on one thing each week. Uh, and so um, this week we're going to be talking about what does it mean to have incredible trust? Um, and so earlier in our question of the week, I asked, uh, what is one of your favorite superheroes? Um, and at the beginning, it might have seemed kind of random, but uh, it really kind of ties into what we're going to go in right real quick, um, because superheroes are pretty cool, right? Right? They they're, can be fun. They're inspiring. Uh, we love watching their movies and seeing all of these crazy adventures that they go and do. Um, and it kind of can even inspire us to be superheroes ourselves. Um, and so we, I don't know if you ever thought about uh, what it, what would happen if you could have a really cool power of like a superhero. Uh, maybe you could be like Peter Parker and have, uh, have all that great responsibility. And so I wanted you guys to kind of picture something with me right now. And if, imagine it's Christmas day and you wake up and instead of getting toys or bikes or whatever it might be uh, that you might get, imagine if you woke up and you found you had actual superhero stuff right under the tree. So what do I mean by that? What if you woke up and you found a, a, a bat belt, you know, like Batman that he carries, you have the bat rings and the bat ropes. What if you woke up uh, or maybe you found the real like green lantern ring that he wears? All right, then you would get these really cool, incredible powers. Um, so if you woke up and you had super strength, or you could fly, or you have x-ray, um, like I don't know, how, how would it feel to go from just being some ordinary kid to having this really crazy, incredible power? And uh, I don't know, if some of you guys might be thinking, man, Pastor Caitlin, that would be really cool. I would love for that to happen. Um, but honestly, it could be a little scary to think about. You know, you know, would you be up for that responsibility that comes with having these powers? You know, would you be brave enough to face the things that were going to be coming? Um, because being incredible, it starts with having incredible trust. Um, and so for us, um, it means that we need to trust God enough to obey his words, to follow his directions, um, because God knows us better uh, than we even know ourselves. 
which is really crazy to think about. Um, he has these really great plans for us, and he shows us that we can trust him, have faith in him, um, and we, we can see that through the Christmas story. Um, and then we see that when God sends an angel to go and visit Mary. And so we're going to read that passage. Uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 1. Uh, I'd love for you guys to join me. It's going to be on the screen. Um, but we're going to start at verse 26. And so I'd love for you to join me. It says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So when we see this story and we're introduced to Mary, we see that she's just this ordinary girl. She's just a teenager. She didn't have a lot of money. Um, the man she was pledged to be married to, he didn't really have a whole lot either. Um, and... Uh, so God sees her and God says, uh, uses her in this moment. Uh, and, and God calls Mary to do something that's really, really amazing. Uh, and so he sends this angel to go and tell Mary um, that she would be the mother of Jesus. Um, and so in this moment, God was asking Mary to trust him. Uh, he needed her to trust her, that he could give her a child, um, even though she wasn't actually married yet, they were just engaged. Uh, he needed her to trust that he was going to smooth things over with Joseph because um, he had a kind of hard time believing her. Uh, and he needed her to trust him even more uh, because people were going to whisper and say things about her being pregnant. Uh, but more than anything, God needed Mary to trust that she was the right person for the job uh, because Mary was going to raise Jesus as her own son. And that's a really, really big responsibility. Uh, but with God's help, uh, Mary brought Jesus into this world um, so that he could be our Savior. Uh, and so in this story, we see uh, even throughout uh, growing up, like Mary trusted God. And that was enough for God to use Mary to do something really, really amazing. And so we tend to think of heroes as just being really incredible people. Right? They can be really fast. Um, they can be super strong, really incredibly powerful um, right? Sometimes we kind of picture that they're you know, larger than life. Um, there's nothing that's common or ordinary about them. They're just really cool people, really awesome at what they do. But I don't know if you've ever stopped to really think about the people who are under those masks. Right? Most of them are just ordinary people. Uh, a really good example, uh, we'll look at like Peter Parker, Spider-Man, right? Um, he was just this regular kid who just happened to be bitten by this radioactive spider. But he had fears, uh, he had self-doubts, he had insecurities, um, just like all of us. You know, he wasn't a hero because he was larger than life. He was a hero in spite of, in spite of being perfectly normal. Um, because what's really cool, and even in all of this, is that God has a plan for each and every one of us, for me and for you. Um, and your, the plan that God has for you is completely unique to you. Um, you're the only person in the whole world who's going to be able to fill the, to fill the plan that God has for you. Uh, and God, he needs people who are fully committed believers in him to go out and share the good news about Jesus um, all throughout the world. And we talked a little bit about that last week, uh, being going out and telling people and sharing who Jesus is with our friends. And so if you can trust God, you know, he's going to use you to do really, really great things. 
Um, and how awesome would it be to, you know, to, to be able to lead your friends to Jesus, being able to share Jesus with them. Mary, she was just somebody who had really incredible faith. And God can use that same kind of faith and use it to change the world. Um, all we have to do is trust him. We have to put our hope in him. And God is going to lead us into that next step. Um, and so the Christmas story, it's not just this incredible, incredible tale that we get to read about, but really it's an invitation to begin our own hero's journey just by following God. Um, and so I kind of want to ask you guys that question of have you placed your trust in Jesus? Um, and I don't know if I could think of a better time than Christmas to be able to do that because um, it's really just a remarkable story uh, and just that start of what does it mean to follow Jesus um, and, uh, so we're going to kind of get ready for a time of prayer. Uh, and so uh, I'd love for you guys to join me as we kind of wrap up. Uh, hey, God, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, thank you that we're going to start celebrating Advent this week. Um, and so just kind of uh, spring opportunities to share hope and spread hope with people because um, you've given the uh given us hope through sending Jesus. Uh, and we know uh, through that, uh, your, Jesus is gonna return one day. Um, and so uh, I just pray that you continue to be with us throughout our week. Uh, give us faith um, that you're gonna do really great things through us, um, with, our, through our, with our friends, with our family, with the people we're around, God. Um, you use uh, everyday people, it's found all throughout the Bible, but you use everyday people uh, and you have them do really great things, and it starts by having trust in you, God. So uh, just continue to give us those opportunities to just trust you even a little bit further each time, God. Um, thank you for this time together. Um, you are so, so good to us. In the dear name I pray, amen. So as we kind of get ready to wrap up our time together, uh, we're going to close with a brand new Bible verse, um, and it's going to come from Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Um, and so we're going to put it on the screen, and really the goal this time week is just to read it a couple times, introduce it, um, and so we can work on learning and memorizing this, this really cool verse, uh, just because it has a really great reminder for us. And so I'd love for you guys to read it with me. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So we're going to read it one more time. Uh, and so continue to read it with me. Read along with me. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So I hope you guys have a really awesome week. Um, I hope your Thanksgiving was great. Uh, I'm so glad you guys were able to tune in. Um, but until next time, just know I'm praying for you guys. Uh, and I can't wait to talk to you later.